Greetings! Welcome back to the Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. Today we are going to be working on some infrastructure building. Specifically, we're making a set of broody coops, breeding coops, so that we can do individual pair matings and control the reproduction and breeding of our chicken flock. So, this is the set of coops. It is a, a bank along the side of our barn. They are four foot wide, two foot deep, and each coop can house one pair. Now these are not big enough for long-term residency of a large number of chickens, obviously. But when a hen goes broody, the, you want a fairly small, relatively dark, nice confined space so that she will feel comfortable, lay her eggs, and sit without being disturbed. The one here is already occupied. We have a hen. We have a hen and a rooster. Okay. So after a couple weeks of the two of them being together, we will remove the rooster. We will put him back with the main flock, and the hen can have the space to herself. The upper bank. They have the, all of the space underneath the roof here is open. And in the upper bank, we have uh, some perches in these. And these can be used for, because the perch, because a little bit more head space, these can be used for our larger breeds. We have an Orloff being, uh, it's an experimental cross that I'm, that I'm tinkering with between Orloff and the, the Orloff rooster and a Phoenix hen. The lower bank are just two feet high, and these will be for smaller breeds and bantams. Okay. So if you want to do a real breeding project and not, you know, anything beyond just kind of your average barnyard mutts, you're going to need some facilities like this. It is a big investment in time. And the part that I want to show you how to do is one of the, the critical things that not as many people think about is just simple framing, and that's making a door. Okay. So the doors that I like to make for all of my coops are simple plywood and spin this around a little bit. A simple plywood door. This will cut out two doors. Talk about that in a second. The problem with plywood doors is you have to have some reinforcement in the back or it will barrel out. If one side of the plywood gets wet, it will expand and force it to bend quite forcefully in the opposite direction. Okay? So you have to have some reinforcement here. So if I go back over to this one, just open one of these briefly. Kind of stand in front of it so they don't get any ideas. You can see there's uh, some reinforcing boards here. Okay. Now that will keep it from barreling. All you need for that are some two by threes. The doors are cut to the standard. The the, the size of the coops are cut that the doors and everything else involved can be made out of standard dimensions. Now, if you're studying this closely and you know much about construction, it'll be fairly obvious that this is sort of a scrap wood assembly. Um, I built this with the help of my wife and a friend in the middle of the explosion in lumber prices <laughs> last year, at the middle of the, you know, the pandemic lumber explosion. So it is scavenged, right? Scavenged parts. But once we get to the doors, we want good stuff. And for the floor, I like to use these um, droppings trays. You can, these are fairly readily available. These are two by two and three inches thick. Okay. So um, this will be the floor that they actually stand on. A couple advantages to advantages to this, uh, the main being that it's very easy to clean. I can just open the doors when they're finished being in there. I can open the doors, just pull these out and dump them in a wheelbarrow. Okay. But you do have to plan for this. You have to leave room so that your reinforcing pieces don't hit these droppings trays. So that's the first 
that's the first piece of, of material that I want to base my dimensions off of. The second is getting the maximum usefulness out of my plywood. So with a 2x4 opening, I can get four I can get four blanks this size out of one sheet of plywood with very little waste, only the, the cutout. Now, when laying this out, I'm going to use, you can see one leaning there, I'm going to use 1x3 for my um, reinforcing pieces on the back. 1 by 3 is not 1 by 3, it's 3 quarter by 2 and a half. So on the top and the hinge side, these are 2 and a half. There and 2 and a half here. Okay. On the bottom, I need to allow for that 3 inches of dead space plus my 2 and a half. So the bottom is 5 and a half. Okay. And then on this side, it's a full three, because this is the side that will swing. And if you lay your reinforcing board right across here, you'll discover that it will hit the other side, because that corner will swing out and you'll end up with a geometry problem. So you need to move, instead of having that reinforcing board right here, you need to move it back so that you have about a half inch of, of clearance on this side, right where the gap is, okay? Now, I've already done the layout and most of the cutout. Um, I need to zip this in half. Let me hang the light end over. But I'm just using this wheelbarrow as a makeshift um, sawhorse here. Yes, I know I am typically a hand tools YouTube channel, but modern tool, modern, sometimes modern materials demand modern tools, right? Making these plunge cuts, you're, you're not going to really want to do that with a hand saw. So this is one of the times where I pull out some of my battery tools. Um, you're using these, safety is important, make sure you're not going to get the saw into the metal wheelbarrow, obviously. Make sure, you know, as I tuck my hair back down in my shirt, make sure you don't have anything dangling that could get caught in the saw blade. You don't have clothing that's too baggy. Um, make sure all of those things are taken care of. So now we have our door blank. I'm going to flip it over. The next thing we need to do is we need to screen this off. We do want it a screen door. We want good ventilation. But we also want to make sure that critters can't get in. And there's two categories of critters. You have the big strong ones, mostly your raccoons. Raccoons can bite right through weak hardware cloth and they can easily bite right through um, chicken wire. Okay. You're really, chicken wire is good at keeping chickens in. It is not good at keeping predators out. Okay, so it does, it's not defending anything. Do not do this with chicken wire. You want good, solid, this is, a, this is just a scrap, a uh, piece cut from scraps from building my sheet pens. Good, solid, heavy gauge welded wire, okay? But your second category of predators, the little guys, your mink, weasel, and um, rats. Rats will get in, okay? <coughs> Rats will get in, they will chew through, they will um, eat eggs, they will eat babies, they will even eat relative. A rat will kill a bigger chicken than you think it would. Okay? So for those, especially the weasels, we want half inch hardware cloth. Okay? So the um, sturdier material that's going to keep the raccoons and possums out is going to go to the outside. And again, this is scraps from the bottom. Notice I have the same set of materials. Hardware cloth on top and welded wire on the bottom for the bottom of this so the rats can't chew up through. 
Because absolutely a rat will get in under there. If you just make the bottom of plywood, a rat will get in under there and chew right up through and cause you all kinds of mayhem. Okay? And if you don't think you have rats around, you're wrong. <laughs> right? I don't care where you live. If you don't think you have rats around, you're wrong. So we're going to put the, the sturdy stuff that will keep the raccoons from biting through on the outside. The hardware cloth on the inside. And this is a totally fine time to use up some scraps. So since this is scraps, I don't have a quite full width, and I'm just overlapping it in the middle. Okay? Now I pre-cut some of these. And these are just a little bit shy of two foot long. For the same reason I discussed with geometry problems, it can't go right up to the edge. So let me make sure I have, yes, this is the swinging edge, this is the hinge edge. And let me change battery. change battery and get a Phillips head out. And grab my screws. Okay. And this is just simply taking some screws. I'm about to use, um, you don't need fancy screws for this type of project. This is not a real structural member of the construction. Everything over there is put together with um, three or three and a half inch deck screws, right? But for just assembling these doors, you don't need deck screws. I'm just gonna be using um, inch and a quarter hard, uh, inch and a quarter drywall screws. Cheap, readily available, work just fine for this. Okay. okay, minor splice in it here. Sorry about that. Um, it's only about three minutes time delay my time. But I screwed the first one in and was trying to cinch it down. It's a shorter screw, um, almost too short. And it was just splitting out the boards. So I popped a couple of pilot holes in here and grabbed some longer screws. We'll tack it in with these longer screws temporarily. messed up all my wire arranging. These are going to go through, but we will take them out in the finished product. And I just drilled some honking big oversized pilot holes here to make sure this doesn't split. The plywood is thinner than these boards, so we're going to flip it over and put the screws in from the other side of it and for the final product. Okay. Then we'll tack this down. As soon as you start filming, you start doing silly things. There we go on that one. I will fix this one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's tacked in place. You can see the screws came through. But I can just flip it over, 
grab some of the proper size screws, which I managed to knock into the grass. And I'm going to drive these in on about, because the screw size is a little too, really a little bit too small. It's long enough to go all the way through, but you're not hanging many threads in. So you need a certain number of threads to have a certain clamping pressure. You can either go with a long screw, which we can't because of the materials we're using, or you can go with a shorter, with more shorter screws, and you still get the same number of threads into wood. So about every two to three inches along these boards, I'm driving a screw. And that will give us plenty of clamping pressure to hold this assembly together. Now, um, I will continue this off camera. You don't want to watch me drill, drive all of these screws in. Okay? So that will hold it together. This is a little easier to do when you don't have the, the, the wire. When you don't have the wire, you don't need these extra long screws to clamp in the place. You can just use these, you know, do one in each corner and then flip it over and run them through the thinner material. The half inch plywood is thinner than the three quarter inch um, board. Mm -hmm. So once these are all in, we can take out the longer screws and they're not going through anymore. It is very important that you don't have screws going all the way through or it will injure your birds. With one exception, this region does not matter. If a screw pokes through down here, which it probably will if you're mounting any kind of latch in this area, that's fine because remember the droppings tray is here. So the birds will never contact this area. But if a screw pokes through over here, that's a problem, okay? So to do the, the uprights, I will just, this is the one I split up. Just put them in and mark what that actually is and then cut it off mm -hmm. and handle this the same way. It'll clamp that in place, okay? And then to talk a little bit about hardware, The hardware I like to use, I like this kind of latch. For your primary latch, um, not any particular brand, uh, brand doesn't matter, but I like this type of latch where you actually have a bolt. Okay. They can't really see it through the glare. You can't. There we go. I shade it a little bit, right? Yeah. I like yeah. these kind of latches that actually have a bolt for the primary latch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will put two, two of these on each door. So you have one top and one bottom. You only need primary latch on one door <coughs> because the second door can be held in place just by a batten, okay? And if you only use the batten, this can come flying off uh, it, when you open up the first door. So I like to put one of these little simple uh, twist eye latches in it. So the primary door that I'm going to be opening and closing all the time is going to have two bolts, top and bottom, and a batten, which is, this batten is the primary way of holding closed the second door, plus it has a little safety catch, so if I open this up, it doesn't fly out. That's how I like to set them up. It's relatively inexpensive. You're not using the expensive hardware on everything, and it holds really well. Right. So it's a very simple way of setting up a, a door for a coop. A door is one of the parts of this that a lot of people are, are more scared of doing than just the simple framing. So I wanted to show the coops, and the door is kind of a key part. Right. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope that you will go and do some projects like these on your own farm. 
if you want to breed animals, you do need the ability to, to, to the ability and the facilities to separate them in controlled mating groups. So this is an important thing to do. And this is, like I said, this is a scrap wood construction. <laughs> you know, so you can get fairly nice stuff out of out of a scrap wood construction. The part that I went out and bought is the roofing, of course. That's not scrap. But put a good roof on anything you buy. It's worth it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you will do some of these things on your own farm. And I hope you will join us next time on Old Boys Rising Farm YouTube channel.